Hi everyone. Welcome back to Crochet Ray Ray. Actually, it should be like Crafty Ray Ray because I do a lot more than crochet. Um, so today I wanted to show how I make covers for my journals. Um, I print my covers on sticker paper. I get my sticker paper from online labels. It's the matte sticker paper and I get it with a line one line slit in the back it just makes it easier for making um, putting the covers on the paper um, and then I use cardstock just uh, whatever cardstock I happen to have but the thicker the better so this is I think a hundred pound cardstock you can hear it's pretty heavy um, and I place that on my sticker paper because it gives even a more dense cover. You could use chipboard, um, but I laminate mine with 10 mil laminate. Uh, so it makes it pretty dense. Like here is a cover that is 10 mil. It's pretty thick, it's pretty durable. Um, but today we will be doing a five and a half by eight and a half journal and they will will be cinching with my will be binding it with my cinch cinching it uh, using my mink i have a heidi swap mink and i also use this awesome trimmer this is a fiskers rotary trimmer i got it from joann's it was on clearance for like 25 bucks um, they normally run 75-ish. I was just at Hobby Lobby and I saw one for like 75. I almost purchased it because mine broke here. So I have to be careful when I cut. I might just like make myself a little molded piece out of like resin or something because I love this cutter. It's one of my favorite cutters. Plus because it's small and portable. Um, no, I'm not getting any kind of kickback for sharing what I use for supplies. This is just what I use. Um, and yeah, I think that it is. So just to tell you what I, how I do designs on my cover, I design in Adobe InDesign or Illustrator um, just because I'm a professional graphic designer and that is the programs that I use. Um, I pay for them as a subscription program uh, programs. I know a lot of people don't want to pay for subscriptions. Um, I do. It's just worth it to me. I use it for everything because um, I do a lot of freelance work and stuff. But so that's how I set my, uh, how I design my covers. And just to show you what I mean, um, I'll open, I'll share my screen so you can see how I do my designs. Okay, right, so this is InDesign, and you can see I have a page palette set up here. This is my design, and then um, I also, you know, set different pages. There's actually two different pages set in this design, uh, three because of the master, the master page was like eight and a half by 11. Um, you can see, see eight and a half by 11, but this page actually is what I set as a half letter size so like half letter half letter and that's what I labeled it um letter size so this was the letter size and then I also did um a quarter page size so that's four and a quarter by five and a half um so I can make little bitty journals uh which was I think one of my last videos but uh in design um do I think it's more to learn, I don't, I don't know. I don't think so. Like if you've ever used like Microsoft Paint, um, the feeling is similar to that. But how I, how I set it up, um, you know, is important. So my document size is the trim size, AKA what the actual size paper is going to be. And then there is a bleed size where you can see this little, space here the bleed size is the extra print over the edge so i can get a bleed ble a bleeded edge um, for my designs that roll over the page 
And unless you have, um, I think a photo printer, photo inkjet printer, you won't be able to print to the edge um, for eight and a half by 11. So that is how I printed my one cover um, to the edge because it was a borderless print. But then, so I print eight and a half by 11 borderless print. And then for the other pages, um, I printed, this actually printed to be um, the page size was like 5.75 by 8.75 because it's one point, it's a eighth of an inch bleed all the way around my page. And so when I have that page size printed out, I trim to that edge and then I fold over the bleed edge on my cover. Um, just so it gives it a nice seamless edge. Um, I printed every single one of these on their own sheet of paper. I probably could have printed both the quarter pages on one sheet of paper, but just so I make sure I give myself enough margin for cutting and trimming, um, I print them all on their sheet, um, their own sheet. So if you see this, um, Sometimes I design in layers, sometimes I don't design in layers. This is one, um, one text box on top of another text box with the different images collaged on there. So there's one, two, three, four images collaged on here that you can see, one, two, three, four. And then there's a little background edge that you can kind of see here, just so I could put my text on top of it. And then each one of these design, like words there, you can see that edge is its own text box. Um, these are all, even though these little icons, this is a text um, type, different font. So every one of them is a different font. Uh, this was a different design completely. And my friend who asked me to design this one and me to design this, add this to the front cover of this design. So it's like a mishmash. Um, also, because I'm going to be binding this with my cinch, um, you can see here, I have like a pretty generous, um, oops, I'll move that, a pretty generous margin where I designed into it because this edge is going to be punched. So I wanna make sure that I don't punch this edge. Um, so I make sure I set my margin here. I could have set this a little bit more. And then I usually try to center this within the punched area, not the design area. I'm not sure why I did that. That was interesting. See this one. This is a back cover. So you can see this is going to be punched on the right-hand side. And then the design is in kind of the center-ish. And then this is the exterior margin that you see. Yeah. So there you can see my designs. Um, this is called like subway kind of typography. Um, I probably could have spaced this a little bit better, but I didn't. It looked a little bit different than what I wanted. But so that's what I use for designing. And then um, I export my designs as PDFs. So you can see um, here's the PDFs. And then I set my publication, like my PDF publications, like the pages I want, marks and bleeds. I use the bleed, so I'm gonna use my document bleed setting. You can also set your crop marks and your bleed marks, and that'll tell you exactly like where you cut, um, like crop marks you can see the crafts, but I don't like that because I can see the craft marks on my printout um, and I don't necessarily completely trim them each time, but then you can change the weight of your trim marks, how much it's offset. Um, that means how close to the corners to the trim um, edge that you want it to be. And uh, so we'll just sort of show you what that looks like. I've already printed these. And then see, here's the crop mark. And then you can see how it's slightly where it shows you where that trim line is. This is a um, Acrobat Pro. Um, 
how you say acrobat, Adobe acrobat, like in like the reader, but this is the pro edition. It does a lot of stuff. Um, if you roll over here, this will tell you what your page actual size is. So here's like, that's my page actual size, including the trim marks. Six by nine. And then when I print them, so like here is set to my laser printer. I think I printed some of these on my laser um, just because it's cheaper than the inkjet. You can see I printed the entire page. Um, if I print it to my HP PhotoSmart, which is that one. Um, it, again, it all depends on what kind of printer you're printing to. So here's like, this is an actual setting that this printer has. So I picked a US letter borderless. That just means that I'm not gonna get any of that funky white border that you get sometimes when you print your documents. Um, it prints right to the edge. I'll trim those off if I see any of them, but it prints to the edge. So that's how I do that. I can do more in-depth complete layout for how I actually design design in InDesign. Um, I should have like done a time lapse. I don't know, but I didn't. Anyway, so here is this. I'm gonna turn my laminator on as well. Again, I use 10 mil laminate and I'm gonna lam I'm gonna put it on three. If you don't know what a mink looks like, there is my mink. I'm just gonna set it over there for now. All right, so how I get like nice clean edges on my printouts. I also um, fold over, like I said, I fold over my prints. I give myself, I cut off just a tiny piece of cor corner. So like a quarter inch of corner. So you see I have these corners. I should show you how to trim that, but I just stick it in my cutter and just slice on the diagonal. And then oops, my mink is ready. Then I take my piece of paper, my cardstock, and this is how the this comes in handy. So instead of just ripping off the whole back sheet of this, I use the slit marks to give me a little overhang piece, right? Um, I used to work in a sign shop where we did like car wraps and signs and decals and stuff. And he kind of showed me how this worked here. I think my mink just died. Something just kind of did it short out. That was super strange. Maybe I'll leave that off for now actually because it was just doing something weird. So see how this tiny little overlap, don't mind this little crease because that's actually gonna get folded. And this is where these little, the slits come in handy too. And then I line up my paper. to the edge, the cut edge right here, in the middle of the diagonal cut. Do you see how that works? It's kind of weird doing it like this, see? All right, I'm gonna look at it my, my way. Is 
like I said, it's only like an eighth of an inch overhang. And then I seal it together. Now I'm going to take this, I'm going to take my hand, you can see it, and pull it. See how that nicely applied. If you have a bone folder, this is where that would come in handy. I don't know where mine is right now. But then I roll over the edges like so. Nope, that one didn't work so well. Or you can just crease it like on your cutting board like this. All right, we'll do it that way. And the bone folder helps with tracing this. So now I have my cover done with that. Oh, you know what I did not get? I did not print an interior cover. So I also will print an interior cover. So now I have just one page. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut this page in half because I'm gonna use it for the back cover interior and the front cover interior. So this is the back cover. That kind of seals in the edges that I rolled over to. There we be. There's a slight overlap on the top. I'm gonna turn that off. Here's the front cover. So that was the back cover. Pretty nice. Here's the back. I'm actually going to use my scissors for this one. If I can find them. Apparently, I don't have scissors in here. I'm not going to use scissors. Where did the scissors go? Scissors. Oh, then I can show you how I cut these, I guess. How I cut the corner. Yeah. So, see the tiny little corner? That's all I cut off. Just a tiny. And what it does, it gives a nice little crease 
or a nice little like said a nice tiny little area where you can fold over your page there without any excess bubbling on the edge if that makes sense i don't know so just a tiny tiny there we go again so you can see the process again So this is like a hinge, the hinge method. If you ever do like vinyl decals, um, this is a popular method on how to apply vinyl on things. So now you can see, is it lined up? See how it's lined up all the way around the edges? corners and the corners to give me that nice edge. So now I'm going to seal it. I'm going to pull my hinge. This way also make sure that there's no bubbles between your cardstock and your cover. Hold over my edges. I really wish I knew where my bone folder was. I love that thing when I was in school. We made lots of books, like little, they were called chap books in when I was in college. All right, I'm going to show you what happens now to the one edge, the one corner that I did not apparently trim enough, of, but the other corners trim just fine. So here you can see there's a little overlap on this edge. It's not very seamless. However, on this seam, that came over nicely. This seam came over nicely. That seam did not come over nicely. <sighs> I'm just going to try and tap that down. It is a bottom edge, so it's not too, too terrible. All right. And then my inside cover. Make sure that this is my inside cover. I find that if I line it up on the bottom and shimmy it around, it lines up pretty good for the top. Smooth it down. So now I have a front cover. Yeah, I think I printed this on my laser. I have a laser HP 255, and then here are my covers. See how they're nice and flush together. Same size. Sometimes when I trim, they don't end up being the same size. I don't know why. Just come. They're just off, oh, just a smidge. Like I think the cover, the back on this is just a smidge off. I'm gonna trim this edge just a smidgen. Wouldn't really matter because it's getting actually laminated there, but just to really, that's just a slip of the slight slight pitch. Okay. Back to the laminator. And because it's 
preheated. I usually use 10 ml laminating. I'm trying to think what this one is. This just says 16 millimeters. I don't know what that means. You're going to guess this is like three mil. These are like almost booklet size lamination seats, like five by seven books. We will not be using these flimsy businesses for that. I got it pretty much so my husband wants something laminated. He doesn't use my good lamination sheets. I was going to say, I thought I was going to be out of, of my lamination. This is enough. I save all my trimmings too. Is this enough? No, we'll use this for the little books. There's enough for the little books. So I will need to have. because there's two covers here, I can use an entire sheet. This sheet is um, eight and a half by 14 um, cover. Since this is an inside cover, I'm going to actually put this on the interior. I like to leave about um, a quarter inch all the way around margins. See that? Um, so when I laminate, it'll be nice. And I space them out to give them more space for lamination. I want to make sure that there's a clear ceiling between these two because this is going to be the outside edge. This is going to be the outside edge. And this is going to be the interior cut line. So these two are going to get trimmed actually right here and right here to the edge. Because I'm actually going to punch into the cover, not the lamination. Sometimes I trim off the excess, but because I want to make sure this cup, this edge gets um, laminated. And then I don't use a, whatever the thing is called, a laminating folder. I just stick it in. I set mine to three. And then I laminate. Make sure it's in there. To go through the laminator. I run this through a couple times actually. Uh, so I've heard that the settings, this one, two, three, four, five is like the settings for what thickness your lamination is, but I've never seen four millimeter lamination. 
five. I mean, there is five. There is no 10. There's seven mil as well. That seems to be popular. I haven't gotten my hands on seven mil. But. And I wish it went faster, but it doesn't go faster because then it didn't get, it wouldn't have enough time to melt the plastic. Yes, it's melting. Melting. This is probably the longest process of the whole thing for me outside of punching. Let's see how this laminated. I'm gonna run it through. Oh, normally I could run it through the other way because this is a 12 by 12, but I'm gonna have to trim this down now. I see. Let's run it through again. And then I'll trim that other edge so I can go the other way. Um, I also made this book. It's a remembrance journal um, for a, a young couple, for a friend. And uh, this is their favorite verse, um, Bible verse on the back. So this will be the front cover, the interior covers, and then the back cover. I'm actually going to trim off this right here, this edge here, for when I bind it. It's normally a corner punch, so it's a nice corner, corner punch there. And then the interior of these pages um, is set up like so. So she's going to be able to put a picture at the top and then write on the pages. So I gave her like three pages. And then here's like what a blank page looks like. I put 60 years worth of writing. So actually 61, because it starts with their first year of memory. Or maybe it's her wedding day. Um, maybe she'll write about her wedding day and then 60 years. That would make sense to me. But just so you can get a, <laughs> get a, this is how thick this book is. I'm glad I have binding this big. Um, I use, 32 pound HP paper. It's got a nice thickness. My husband says it's like flyer paper. I guess it could be like flyer paper. Um, it's just, it's nice paper uh, for journals. It's not like copy paper. Now my trim. All right, since I can't go the other way, I'm going to trim this edge. So that means I need to take like two inches off. Actually, what the heck? I'm going to trim it in half. I don't know if technically the trimmer is supposed to cut 10 mil, like 10 mil lamination, but it does. Um, I also have a big, big trimmer downstairs that is a big stack of trimmer um, that I will use to actually cut the pages in half for this. This is just gonna be a line journal inside. I should probably print those pages. That sound is the laminate catching on the edge. Sometimes it does that when you don't have like a shim to put through your lamination, laminating machine. So we're going to stick it in this way. That's to make sure to seal these edges. What the heck is that to the side of there? If I got a piece of hair stuck in there, it's a piece of plastic. That's just a piece of dust. Oops. See how it's like that completely sealed out of my family. I'm gonna bump the heat up. What I notice though when it gets really hot is that it gets a little melty. Like 